everyone. Welcome back to another episode of AWS Support You, where we bring experts around from AWS to provide you with best tips to optimize your performance in the cloud, uh, get better costs, and ultimately utilize AWS in the best possible manner. Uh, my name is Clint Wyckoff, and I'm an enterprise support manager based out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, today's topic of AWS Support You is diving deep into AWS Systems Manager. And uh, joining me today is Anoop and Ranjith from our AWS Solutions Architecture team. Uh, Anoop, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Absolutely. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to the show. My name is Anoop Shivadas. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect here at AWS. I've been with AWS for uh, the past five plus years, uh, and I'm based out of Arlington, Virginia, our HQ2. Yeah, I can go next. Uh, I'm Ranjit Rayapralu, based out of Seattle area, senior solutions architect working with AWS, based out of uh, Seattle. Looking forward to this session. Nice. Thanks for thanks for joining us. And a quick note to the attendees online viewing the, the Twitch stream. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, as we mentioned a little bit a couple of seconds ago, the topic of today is going to be diving deep into AWS Systems Manager. Specifically, we're going to fo focus on Session Manager as well as uh, the Patch Manager. And um, before we get into the presentation today, and I throw it back over to Anoop, who's going to be batting lead off for us, a quick note, if you wouldn't mind utilizing the chat panel on the right-hand side, we'll be checking back in periodically uh, throughout the presentation and the demo that they have lined up for you all today. Uh, so if you have any questions, um, both Anoop and Ranjith are experts that will be able to help answer those. Uh, but also, if you're interested in throwing and giving us some uh, comments and feedback about what you like about the show, any uh, ideas for future topics, please take a look and uh, click on our survey link here at the bottom that we'll throw in the chat here in a second. Um, your feedback is very crucial to us here at AWS Supports You, and we look forward to uh, to getting your feedback. Um, so with all that out of the way, I'm going to toss it over to Anoop first. Why don't you uh, take it away from here, and we'll check back in a few minutes. Absolutely. So um, the agenda for today, right? So uh, we will start off with an intro for systems manager to make sure everyone is on the same page, uh, set some baseline. We will start off uh, with an intro. And then we will talk about customer testimonials, a um, couple of examples of customers who have uh, leveraged systems manager and having some success around it. And then Ranjit is going to take a lot of time diving deep into sessions manager and patch manager. And we would like to show you things in action. So Ranjit is going to dive deep and do a demo of both these services as well. And, and uh, we'll have plenty of time for the Q&A at the end as well, right? So that's the agenda for today. So let's get started. So Systems Manager, right? Um, this is going to be a 30,000 foot uh, overview of Systems Manager. Uh, essentially, it's, it's a service, uh, management service to help you manage your resources uh, both in AWS as well as in a hybrid setup, right? So when I say hybrid setup, I mean on-prem uh, environment, right? So if you are running AWS and an on-prem, and if you have multiple resources, uh, like many resources uh, in, in both environment, you can have systems manager as a suite uh, to, to control your resources, its governance, its, its inventory, its health, et cetera, right? So I like to see systems manager as a Swiss army knife, right? Um, the main reason is there are like multiple services which are coming under systems manager portfolio, uh, which will be which will be key for, for uh, you know, various functions. So essentially uh, all these services are kind of classified into three buckets, right? So the very first one is the IT SM side of things, right? IT service management. So think about change management uh, or incident management for that matter, right? So we have services to kind of facilitate that. The second aspect is around application management. Um, so think about, you know, application configurations, uh, you know, uh, secrets for that matter, right? parameters for that matter. So that we have services to kind of facilitate that. Last bucket is around the node management aspect, right? So think about, you know, collecting an inventory of all your resources patching the nodes, for example, right? Establishing a session for that matter, right? Things like that. So that's the that's the third part, node management. So ITSM, application management, and the node management. These are these are the key, uh, key classifications of systems manager. Next slide, please. So what are the benefits of systems manager, right? Um, so essentially, it's actually falling under, you know, these buckets, right? Uh, the very first one is around shorten the time to detect problems, right? So what, what do we mean by that? So systems manager allow you to group resources, right? You can group resources into, let's say, for example, based on an application workload, 
or you know environment for that matter right think about you know production environment dev environment uh, etc right so think about this uh, if you have an application which has a dependency on ec2 rds and s3 you can actually resource that uh, or group that into a resource for example right and and once you uh, group that resource what you will have is all the health information or your configuration information can be available from from a single pane of glass view from a dashboard so that's much more seamless than having resources in multiple places so it will give you a lot of grouping capabilities the second aspect is around automation as you see in the slide right so you know if you have hundreds and thousands of resources you care about automation right if you want to reboot you know, all your nodes in your environment, you can actually run automation and we give you playbooks uh, to facilitate that. You know, we have numerous playbooks which you can you know, leverage for that, right? Run books and playbooks, things like that. The third aspect is around improving visibility and control, right? So as I mentioned, when you group resources, all the all the information around that, right? Like your, your states, your configurations, uh, it will be available for you from a centralized dashboard, which is much more seamless. The fourth aspect is around managing your hybrid environment, right? So let's say, for example, if you are running your, uh, you know, uh, on-prem environment where you have your Linux systems or your Windows systems, you can actually leverage Systems Manager to, to kind of control or manage those resources as well. So we leverage a lightweight agent which can be used to manage that, right? So it's much more seamless in that way. Last but not the least is the security aspect, right? The security and the and the compliance aspect. So Systems Managers got deep integration with the service AWS service called as AWS Config. Uh, so you can have all your uh, you know security and compliance information, right? As resources change, right? Think about Drift, for example, right? These these info is available for you to consume right from the Systems Manager suite itself, right? So you know you up to date antivirus definition, for example, patch baselines, for example, application configurations, for example, right? Can be controlled from from Systems Manager, and it'll actually allow you to have that single pane glass view, right? So that's that, that's the key benefits out of that. So going forward, right? Next slide, please. Uh, so again, this is a graphical representation, right? So I was talking about grouping the resources. So once you group resources, you can visualize the data from a single pane glass view. And based on that, right, if you have, uh, you know, actions which you want to take based on your automation, you can do that, right? So visualizing the data, grouping the resources, and taking actions based on run books and playbooks will, 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 will help you and Systems Manager facilitate those uh, aspects for you in a seamless manner. Next slide, please. So to, to summarize, right? Uh, so if you're looking for uh, agility and control across your environment, Systems, can, uh, systems Manager can be used for that purpose. Uh, so for example, if you have resources in AWS or on-prem or in the edge or other clouds, Systems Manager can be used to manage those resources. And we allow you to you know, uh, centralize your resource configuration, observability and compliance data as well. So we have config integration, CloudWatch, CloudTrail and EventBridge integration so that you can have uh, all these configuration in a single place. And we briefly talk about automation as well, right? So System Manager got automation where you can uh, run your automations like playbooks and run books in a seamless way. And these automations can be done uh, based on uh, a certain event, for example. So for example, change management, right? Event management or incident problem management. The, all ITSM activities can be, can be uh, facilitated for these uh, automations as well. And if you are running ITSM solution in your environment, for example, Jira or ServiceNow for that matter, we have connectors which will actually facilitate bi-directional sync as well, right? So you have systems manager as a centralized system to manage all your resources in one place, right? And and on and these resources can be handled in a granular way as well, right? So if you if you bucket these resources as a resource group, or if you want to kind of handle these resources using tags, so we have various where there various ways for you to handle these resources in a granular way, right? And on top of that, your security and compliance comes into play, right? So all your you know security configuration, patch line, uh, patch baselines, and all those things, and your audit configurations is available for you to consume from a single pane glass view. So that's the major benefit of leveraging Systems Manager for, for managing your hybrid environment as well, right? With that, we'll take a quick pause and see if there are any questions. Clint, uh, is, there any, is there any questions uh, from, from our audience in the chat? Yeah, so there hasn't been any questions in the chat that have come up yet. However, you know, I uh, recently worked with a, a customer whenever I was at TAM uh, to help them implement the ServiceNow connector um, with, with Systems Manager. Um, so that was uh, really good to hear you, hear you talk about that. One thing that sticks out to me, though, 
you know, f- from a TAM perspective and then the SA team that we work with when we support our customers, how are you seeing larger customers implement, you know, systems manager at scale with like keeping in mind the cloud governance and management that, that we need to have and having, you know, being able to manage multiple AWS accounts? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so Ranjit is going to dive deep into some of the functionalities. Ranjit, do you want to take that? Sure. Yeah. It- Systems Manager works seamlessly with AWS organizations, using which mm-hmm. you would be able to create organizational units for your different set of you know um, accounts, and then mm-hmm. you would be able to use Systems Manager to operate all of them from one single place. I would be able to dive deep into that when we speak about Patch Manager sometime later. Okay. Yeah, that's definitely, especially some of the larger accounts that utilize AWS and are implementing, you know, multiple accounts to to separate and reduce blast radius from a security and workload perspective. You know, being able to manage at scale is very, very critical. So be curious to uh, to dive deep into that with you here in a few minutes. Sure. sure. And uh, thanks, Anup. Let's Let's see a couple of customer testimonials and then see some partners, and then we will go to manage instance at scale with sessions manager and patch manager. So one of the first customer testimonial that I want to bring up is Neyman Marcos, Hemant Jairam, the director of Cloud Center of Excellence from Neyman Marcos. So the problem that they had was like, you know, they were looking for a robust solution for their support personnel to access EC2 instances that provides capability of an audit trial. With Systems Manager, they can get rid of this mundane, undifferentiated heavy lifting from their engineers. And engineers were able to manage this via Systems Manager. And as a result, they have reduced their footprint of Bastion hosts per VPC, saving numerous instances. In addition to that, they have been able to manage critical patching of numerous EC2 instances by leveraging existing personnel, improving their security and compliance posture. And let's see one more example, one more uh, customer use case from GE Appliances, Rafael Garrido from the the, the DevSecOps leader from GE Appliances. So they had mentioned that, you know, before they had access to the AWS tools, they had to do a lot of configurations and processes of logging and then absorb everything into centralized platform to understand the security events after the fact. By using AWS Systems Manager and other AWS tools, they have gone from 0 to 100% real-time visibility and night and day contrast with their security posture. Now, let's see some of the, not all, but some of the partners and then the customers who use Systems Manager. If you see, there are some uh, big companies that use Systems Manager for their day-to-day operations here, from Atlassian to Datadog. Now, let's just dive deep into managing instances at scale. As Anup mentioned, Systems Manager is a Swiss Army knife. It has so many things that can be incorporated into one service, which can be utilized in your organizations. In this session, we are going to speak about Sessions Manager, Session Manager, which which can be used to establish sessions sessions with your EC2 instances. And we will speak about Patch Manager, which can be used to deploy patches across your fleet in order to maintain security and compliance posture. Now. What is AWS Systems Manager Session Manager? So Session Manager helps you to securely connect to a managed instance with a single click. By doing so, you wouldn't need to open any inbound port or manage any SSH keys. Session Manager provides a centralized access control over who can access your instances with full auditing capabilities. It records the session data so that you know when the session has started, when the session is terminated, who who did who have who access the instances, etc. And these audit trails can be stored into S3 buckets, which we will see when we go to the demo. And these S3 bucket audit trails can be utilized in multiple ways to build dashboards or etc. You know, to to query the the sessions, to build dashboards with the data that was stored in S3 buckets, etc. And now, how does a session manager work? Right, you know, when you when you register your instances with Systems Manager, an IAM role or you know, it uh, are a role or an user that has permissions for Session Manager will be created. And now, by using that, you would be able to establish a session that can be from browser, which is our console, or from CLI. In order to do from CLI, we need a CLI plugin that I will show you in the demo. Now, when you start the session, you can continue doing so. 
and by default the root permissions will not be provided provided we have to explicitly mention the root permissions to the system's user if it is required and now when the session history session is terminated all the history is stored in the s3 bucket i mean the the session can be sent to s3 bucket but it is stored within the session manager and the advantages of this output like you know that we are storing as part of this session you would be able to alert and then create sms notifications to review what's happening or if something unexpected is happening in your instances and also helps you to get the transcript of the sessions which can be reviewed to improve your security posture and then we'll see how does i i spoke about creating a user right so how does it authenticate it? so when a version so when we register an instance with session manager version of ssm agent that gets created onto the instance now along with that it creates a user instance with privileges as i mentioned and now the on linux machines these are going to etc sudo or in linux or it goes to the administrative group. if you see the diagram here you would be able to identify how uh, this authentication is done so overall if you see now right when you in, when you create an instance and then when you register with ssm sessions manager session manager what happens is there are two types of instances we have one that comes up with ssm agent by default other that doesn't come with ssm agent by default when the ssm agent doesn't come by default you would deploy you would install the ssm agent in your instance so that you would be able to create the, or start a session with it and now once the agent is already installed in your ec2 instances the user is going to be authenticated against iam and once it's authenticated you can use the systems manager session manager in order to start a session with https i will show you in a demo how we can initiate the session via cli or via console and before we go to um, patch manager are there any questions so far Shin, do we have any questions one thing that i had come up with there ranjit was you mentioned uh, instances where the SSM agent is present by default, and then uh, instances or AMIs, excuse me, where the uh, where the agent is not present. So that would mean I, as a customer, if I brought my own AMI using like Packer or something like that, or EC2 Image Builder, I would be able to include as part of like the user data the installation of the SSM agent. Is that how that would work, or what's the best practice there? So identity center at this point of time supports session manager. So you would be able to use it in order to set up the um, instances with SSM. There is a link that we can share uh, with the, if, if, if you require. Gotcha. Yeah, I see that one came in from, uh, from JibJab06. The one I was asking about specifically though was the inclusion of the SSM agent in um, the actual AMI or the images that we're deploying from an EC2 perspective. You mentioned it is included by default and then it is not included as well. So I was just sort of asking yeah. like what the best practices for, for, not in, for the images it, where the uh, agent is not included. It depends on the use case, right? So the, the AMIs are included based on the operating systems. Mm -hmm. So there are some operating systems where the uh, SSMs are by default installed, like for example, Amazon Linux 2. And there are some operating systems like Red Hat Linux. We don't have the SSM installed directly. That's when you have to explicitly have to deploy it in the instances to make right. sure that you get the session. Gotcha. Okay. So then the the question that had come through there that you sort that you did answer there that we'll toss a link in the chat here in a in a mm -hmm. second is related to IAM and the session manager work with Identity Center slash SSO single sign on. Yes, it works now you know so session manager worked with iam identity center that's correct gotcha i believe the from a the reason why it would work is because you mentioned their roles specifically and so it assumes the iam role and as long as the uh the group within sso has that role associated with it, it the session that's manager would work correct that is correct yes and it is a fairly recent launch i think sometime last year um mm -hmm. you know um there are more details in our uh, 
documentation about how it actually works yeah you know, uh, that can be shared the, yeah there are granular improvements improvements uh, as well on that and the link which we are going to share has all the details there gotcha yeah we just tossed the the link there in the in the chat um that's all the questions that have come in so far and the one that I had come up with along the way as well there. Um, for the folks online, if you do think of other questions, please feel free to toss them in the chat. We'll answer them live. Um, but yeah, I'll yeah. throw it back over. Let's, let's just wait for like 10 seconds or so to see if there are any questions. Otherwise we will talk about patch manager. Okay, we can go to patch manager now. So let's start by understanding why do customers want to automate the patching of EC2 instances. So consider a situation where you have a, an organization that has so many number of EC2 instances in their infrastructure. It could be hundreds or thousands of instances. Now patching these many number of large instances manually takes a long time and it is error prone. So, and also additionally, some of these instances may be running critical applications so you can't actually deploy the patches whenever you want there should be a scheduled maintenance window in order to navigate through all these things and by and also to achieve the security and compliance posture of your organization's requirement systems manager patch manager is going to help you to maintain that systems manager patch manager I, I'm going to refer it as patch manager from now on. It comes up with some features in it, such as patch baselines, patch groups, et cetera, which can be utilized in order to maintain the patching of instances at scale. And one of the questions that we discussed earlier about having to maintain these patches across organizations that also we will see in this. Now, what is systems manager, patch manager, right? Patch manager is the automate patching capabilities provided by systems manager by defining the rules. It has some rules like, you know, what are the auto approval? Like you, how many days you have to wait before the patch goes for approval? And do you want to scan or only scan and install the patches on your instances? And it, it comes up with an advantage of having to reduce the time to install the critical patches. And also, it, uh, it helps you to maintain a maintenance window for the patches to be deployed in your instances. It supports most of the operating systems, includes Windows, Amazon Linux, CentOS, Debian, Red Hat, SUSE, etc., etc. If there are any other operating systems that are not being mentioned here, and if you want to know, please do let us know. We would be able to check and get back to you. And one important thing to note is that, you know, um, when you the the systems manager patch manager works with patch baseline where we are going to set, create a group of patches combine a group of patches into a baseline and then we are going to evaluate our instances against it and we are going to deploy those patches from patch baseline into the instances now let's see more details about patch manager and the features that we have in patch manager one of those a uh, primary focus for this patch manager is to is to maintain security related updates at operating systems level so consider as i was mentioning you have hundreds of thousands of instances that may have different operating systems in it so you're going to create a baseline that can take care of different sets of operating system flavors different sets of versions you are going to create one baseline and you're going to Install that baseline against all your instances, which would become very easy for you to maintain across your organization. And it has different components that are chained together. One is the patch baseline, where we are going to specify the patches. And then we have the patch policy. So that's where we are going to control over our patching operations across different instances. And then we have state manager association. So state manager in a, is another feature or a service in a systems manager which will help you to maintain your instances in a state that you are going to define now by associating state manager with patch manager you are going to make sure that the system that you are going to target or you are going to evaluate will be in the same state that you would want and then you are going to register task in order to run a command to deploy patches and it's going to take care of 
all the predefined tasks so which are going to be removing all the operational heavy lifting that your current team may have and it in the back end it uses a run command to to does this uh, patching and now let's see how do we operation uh, how do we operationalize this patching at scale for an organization so you have consider you have uh, like you know uh, so many accounts in your in your company and you are grouping them uh, along with your uh, operational practices like development testing production etc and you're putting them in aws organization now from your management account you are going to centrally define and then you know you're going to scan and install patches across all the target accounts uh, instances in target accounts this way you're going to leverage the centrally defined patch baselines so you create one patch baseline one place and then you are going to get through all the um, accounts in your uh, uh, all the accounts in your organizations and you can create multiple patch policies to control patching across different sets of managed nodes and now by doing so we are going to visualize i mean like you know as i was mentioning we are going to get deployments into your instances so once this is deployed you would be able to see a dashboard where you would be able to understand the status of the compliance across your nodes in the in the um, organization or in the account i would say before we go into demo are there any questions that we have so far no there hasn't been any questions yet one call out that i did want to make there's you know just sort of emphasizing the shared responsibility model and what aws's role in patch manager is ranjith and anoop do you just want to talk about that quickly before we jump over to the demo uh sure so one thing for one thing is that you know we don't really i mean aws don't test the patches before they are mm -hmm. made available with patch manager uh, that's for sure we have to take care when we are going to use it in our patch uh, baselines. Right. That's very important. And also, I would say the other call out from a customer perspective is to make sure you test your patches in a dev account or on a dev workload um, to make sure that it's not going to introduce any unnecessary um, or unwanted uh you know, bugs or anything like that into the environment, it might break yes. your application in the way that it, it runs or is deployed. Yes. So one thing I will tell you right before we go to the demo, just a quick 10 mm -hmm. second, like, you know, there is a process that most of the organizations follow. So you create a patch baseline as part of your first step. So deploy it in development environment. Mm -hmm. You go through that process, you go through the testing, go through the cycle and then observe how this patch is behaving in development then go to the staging right you know and then observe the behavior in staging as part of step two and then the final step would be pushing those patches into the production we don't really directly push them into production right yeah you should always just like with anything always test first Absolutely. Um, yeah that's probably the number one takeaway of all this is test first <laughs> um <laughs> Hey, all right, I'll pass it back over to you. Uh, feel yes. free to bring up the, the, the demo, demo there. Um, for the folks online, please continue to bring the questions. Uh, we appreciate the interaction there. Yes. Let's, uh, let's go to the demo now. So I'm, I'm in console now. If you can see, I have some instances here. So I created a few instances up front for us to go through and see how we can set up the sessions. But before that, let me just take you to launch instance page where I will show you the available AMIs with SSM already installed. So here, if you see, we have Red Hat, Windows, Ubuntu, Mac, Linux, etc. So there is a link that we can go through in order to identify the supported operating systems with SSM agent pre-installed. So these are the available operating systems. Now, if you can, I'm just going to create one instance here that doesn't have SSM auto, uh, SSM agent auto installed so that I can show you how to install it manually. In order to do that, we need the key pair to log in via Putty, which I'm going to use. So I'm going to download the key pair here. I'm creating the key pair. It's getting downloaded. I'm going to launch the instance. And I'm going to take the SSH only from my IP address. Now, while this comes up, let's go to the instances again. It takes a few minutes for this instance to be initialized and then status checked. So we are going to go through the other instance and try to connect it to it. 
there are multiple ways that we can connect to the system one is via sessions manager start session and the other one is from this console itself now we will see both like you know how it works in order to connect we need the instance id so we are going to copy that from there and let's go to session manager session manager here So here, if you see, there is the start my session button. And here also, you see that if you select an instance, the connect will be highlighted. And by from there, you would be able to connect to this. But let's go to system session manager and then connect from there. We can pick the instance that you want to connect and then we can click on start session. Now, the session comes up here. You see now the session is established. We will just try to execute some command and then try to see you know, uh, whether the agent is successfully installed. So you see the command for uh, checking the status of Amazon SSM agent is you know, system CTL status. So we just did that and we are able to see the agent is actively running now. And let's get back to instances again. And see if the um, let's go to CLI and then connect it now. So we are in CLI, right? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, in order to connect from CLI, we need the SSM Systems Manager plugin here. So I'm just typing the name of it so that you can make a note. I have already downloaded that in my computer, so I don't need to deploy again. So this is the plugin that we need in order to connect to our instances from our CLI. So I'm going to now start a session from CLA. So that command is you know, SSM start session. I am going to give the target with the instance ID. You see now the session started. Now I can, I'm going to use the same CTL command to validate, to, to check the status of the agent. I think come let me type again. So are there any questions? Nope, no questions yet. I was just answering a few uh um well, there was a question. It was related to uh, online training for cloud practitioner, which I, okay. was, I was answering, but uh, none necessarily related to the uh, to the presentation yet today. Okay. If you see now the uh, the session is logged in, and then we don't have root permissions there. And then let's get back to uh, the console and see if we have the no SSM is available for us to explore. So it's available now. So let's go ahead and then try to see if we can connect to that instance. Remember that instance doesn't have SSM agent already available. So if you see now, because it doesn't have an instance, I'm unable to connect. So I'm going to connect to this using SSH. So I downloaded the uh, keys file so i'm going to import the keys file and then i'm going to use the connection to establish to log into Pati and then download the ssm agent here and i see that question chris like i thought you couldn't run btc miners no that's just the name of the instance for me to identify <laughs> So by default, you can use you can use EC2 user to connect to the instances. So I have used the same, and now I'm going to download the SSM agent into this Red Hat Linux machine. So please try to cross check in your fleet whether you have different set of operating systems where you have to download the agent or the agents are already automatically available. And one more thing that I want to call out here before I uh, violate the device, that you know there could be a way that 
you would be able to deploy or auto update the SSM agents across the fleet. I will I will show it to you in a moment. That way you wouldn't have to log into these instances individually and then update the SSM agent for any you know new features that are coming up. Now, if you see now, the agent is uh, installed in my machine. Uh, I think I am trying to check the status. So, wait a minute. See now, the actively it's working fine. So, I'll get back to the console and I can I will go to the systems manager again and then try to set up the session for this machine. If you see now, this connect is highlighted. Now, earlier it was not highlighted. Now, I am able to connect to this system via CLI. If you observe right this way, you are going to reduce a lot of overhead from your you know, sysops team to maintain so many, so many keys or so open so many ports, etc. Because it's it's one click solution in order to connect to your instances in cloud in AWS. Any questions uh, before we go to the next one? So one thing I just want to call out that the well, let me ask you. What is the additional value add that a, the, that a customer would get or an ops team that would, would get by using a uh, session manager over at Instance Connect? Okay, so there are multiple differences between easy to Instance Connect and Sessions Manager, Session Manager, right? So Session Manager is agent-based. It provides mm -hmm. a holistic access control to an instance. Whereas easy to, easy to Connect is a SSH-based connect. It's directly, you know, you would be able to do connect into it and then do some kind of an operation, but you would not be able to do admin operations on this one. You would not be able to make sure that you have all the, um, uh, all the, what do you say, the control over what you are planning to do in the instance. Right. So now I'll just go back a second. So this is our patch manager screen. Like, you know, if you see, this is where we are going to identify the status of our instances. And um, there is a quick setup that is available for patch manager through which we would be able to go and then create patch manager. So we are going to click on get started and then go to the next step. And while it comes up, right, you know, we can still like, just me give you a few more points on easy to connect versus um, mm -hmm. system manager. Um, so easy to connect doesn't, it, it helps you to connect to ECT instances, but for example, consider you have RDS instances, et cetera, et cetera, it's better to use uh, sessions manager again. Right. Plus, yeah. it's the SSM agent, therefore, it allows you to interact with the other um, yes. products within the systems manager suite. Yes. So here we are creating a patch policy. If you see, I'm going to give the name as, you know, AWS supports you patch policy. So I was mentioning earlier about using scan and then scan and install. So two options are available here. So you, sometimes you would only need to scan to get the compliance status, right? So we can use that. And then we have the results like you want to do. You want to schedule it daily or you want to schedule at a specific time. We support these cron expressions that you can use and then reboot if needed. Make sure that you have the high availability in case of restarting the servers. And these are the patch baselines. As I mentioned, we have the recommended and also have the custom patch baseline here. So we can use one of those based on the needs. And then we can write the output to S3 bucket. So we can pick up, we can pick an S3 bucket here from my list and then you know I can push the details or I can push the results through that S3 bucket and we can go ahead and then start it. So there are multiple options. So they're about running at scale. So current region or multiple regions, like you know, all managed nodes or nodes based on tag. No, there are like plenty of customization features available here for you to be able to manage patch manager based on different needs. And we are going to create it now. Now, since I selected here scan and install, this patch manager setup is going to scan and install the systems in my instances. You see now the deployment status is here. I, I spoke about having a dashboard to understand what is the compliance status of our uh, infrastructure. So you would be able to find out that here. So this is where we are going to see the current status and you know uh, we can find out how many failed, how many passed, etc. And the filter is available here too, based on the deployment status. And let's go and see the 
the other features that we have here. So the other one is patch group. So I was speaking about patch group, right? So patch group is where we are going to like you know combine these patches into one and then you know you are going to deploy it based on the tags so our instances would have the patch group same as this one those instances will be considered for the patch deployment and now we spoke about patch baseline so patch baseline is combination of all these patches we are going to see how we can create a patch baseline here so I'm going to create a batch baseline for Red Hat Linux because I created one instance in this demo. I'm going to pick the version and then I'm going to pick what kind of severity that I want and what is the auto approval date here. So I would say like, you know, it's going to be seven days before I proceed to deploy these patches and I'm going to give the name of a tag basically for me to evaluate what is this batch baseline for. And no patch baseline is created. So if we can go ahead and then search for it, we would be able to see. And in that, we would be able to find out the details again. So if you want to modify, you can go to that and modify. And while it searches, while I search for this one, if you observe on top, we have a patch now option, right? So it's not necessarily to be deploying at a scheduled intervals. You can even do a right now patch my instance option. So you can use that in order to do a patch instance too. That would also like, you know, ad hoc cases where you would want to deploy a patch, you can do that. So, well, so if you go to the third page, you now we would be able to find out the custom patch baseline that I have created and it has the details that I have. And it's not a default baseline. So when you select the default baseline, the default baseline would be deployed onto your patches, uh, onto your instances. And it has all the details here and it's, it has the, Key, tag, key value. Now, in general, in organizations, they use these tags in order to make sure that they deploy patches on specific instances at a given time. So you have a development group. So development group would only be impacted with the patch deployment. You have a testing group, and then you have a you have a, a production group. So you, based on the tags, these will be deployed. And if you see now here, you would be able to identify the non-compliance, right? Let's just try to see what is the status currently we have some some instances that are failed let's go to the nodes that have failed patches so this is where we would be able to identify what is the server that did not pass and then what are the patches that got failed and you if you observe here all the links are available so you can go through these links to get more details and also you can export it to s3 bucket for retention purposes so currently apache server is having some problem it is not successfully deployed the patches so let's go to that and see what is there. If you observe, it will show you all the patches and what is the compliance level, what is the severity, and like you know, what's the classification, what's the baseline ID used, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. We'd be able to get all the details. If we want to just test again whether it's successfully deployed or not, you can do a patch no option. If not, you can go back and then try to explore again. And let's get back to patch manager again. And by the way, I was speaking about a custom patch baseline. So this is where I'm going to show you an example of creating a custom patch baseline that has a uh, like you know different set of uh, operation system, operating systems here. Like if you see here, this is Amazon Linux. This is a different flavor of Amazon Linux, right? So if you want to create a if your organization has so many different flavors of operating systems, you can create your custom patch baselines with all these operating systems, and then you can initiate them from using your CLI itself. In that, you are going to register your patch baseline first with a patch group, and then you are going to execute the patch baseline or patch group against your instances. I'm not going to execute here, but you know that that's the process that we have we will follow in order to do this one. And now let's get back to console and see how can we do auto update for like when you have so many instances and also what is the session history that is being stored. So if you see here, we have an option called fleet manager. So in fleet manager, um, you will be able to see all the instances that are currently in your organization and you will be able to see the current status of the SSM agent there. Consider you have some problem or you have to update all the SSM agents, there is an option to auto update all the SSM agents there. So it will be done with one click itself. It will help you to maintain the up to date version of SSM agent installed in all your instances. And it also helps you to see the config recording here. So there are multiple options that we have here.
And this is one more place where we can do our top data files as a major. And let's go to the history and see what are the things that we are storing. And then, you know, how can we see this? So we have session history here. So we have uh, active sessions too. And then these are all sessions that are completed or terminated. So if you see here, we have the session ID, owner, instance ID. What is the document name? Reason, start date, end date, etc. So documents are the backbone where by using which uh, systems manager would be able to initiate the transaction. So this is the document for setting up a session. And we can create automations with the help of the systems manager documents. And now we'll just go back to console and we'll stop the demo. So that's the demo that I have. Any questions before I go to the next slide? So we did have a question that came in. Let me pull it up here really quickly. It was from uh, bah, 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 Infamous PS. And they were curious about how SSM, uh, the agent is added automatically and how does it get admin privileges? So let's just quickly touch on Ranjith, the, the permissions and how the agent gets installed um, into the so, EC2 instances there. The, the agent doesn't have the admin privileges automatically. So there are um, ways that you would do, like, you know, mm -hmm. there are some documentation that we will provide how to you how to make your SSM user root or how to make your SSM user um, the, the admin, right? You know, you can use the IAM roles, you can use the IAM tags in order to do so. And also you can add the users to pseudo users, etc. There are different possible combinations that you can do in order to give the complete permissions to it. Sure. And then if uh, the run command and invoking commands inside of the EC2 instance, whenever you pass those along, how is the, the permissions there granted? How is control uh, uh, access controlled? So all these access controls are maintained via SSM user that we mentioned while setting, while, while, uh, tar while, while setting up the instance with SSM agent, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, the permissions that SSM user have is going to take care of that one. Okay, I'll uh, toss a few links in the chat there for you, yeah. PS, that will be good references. Um, but that... I think someone asked about uh, going to cover SSM automation custom docs. Uh, we are not covering in this session. Okay. But I'm going to share the resources here, right? You know, um, if we can share those resources, uh, the, those were like, you know, uh, you can use these to get started or try to identify some workshops and also try to get more details. So workshops definitely are the best way to um, get used to, get your hands on the service, try to identify how these services are going to uh, help your organization and then try to get more details on the service. I would strongly encourage you to go through them. Nice. Great. If there's any other last minute questions that the, the folks online want to toss in the chat there, please feel free to do so. Um, we covered a lot today. Uh, we covered, uh, we dove deep into AWS systems manager. Specifically, we focused on session manager as well as patch manager. Um, and, you know, here at AWS supports you, we're very keen on your feedback. So if there's anything you'd like to see future topics, on uh, upcoming episodes of AWS Supports You, feel free to drop us a note at AWS Supports You at Amazon.com. Uh, we're definitely interested in your feedback. And who knows, one of your topics that you recommend might end up being a future episode of AWS Supports You. Um, yeah, that's how that works. You give us your feedback, we listen to it, and we bring experts like Anoop and Ranjit on the show. Thanks for tuning in today. We greatly Greatly appreciate it. Before we uh, before we wrap up, any closing remarks, fellas? So, uh, yeah, uh, all good, right? You know, it, it's it's like uh, you know, if you're if you're running resources uh, in AWS and on prem, right? Managing that, uh, the operational readiness and health and whatnot. This this keeps that single pane glass view, right? So the walk away for you is single pane glass view. Uh, option for you for managing your resources is what a systems manager is all about, right? Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll let that as a key takeaway for you. Perfect. Yes. It's going to reduce a lot of operational overhead, I know, across so many teams just to mm -hmm. maintain these fleet across your you know locations, organizations, domains, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. It's going to be very helpful to maintain the instances at scale, uh, make sure that these instances are 
adhering to the security and compliance books that you have in your organizations yeah that's the the security compliance and auditing is is very important yes. um, especially in in today's day and age uh, so here at aws supports you we air every monday at 2 p.m eastern 11 a.m pacific uh, so would please join us again next Monday, February 13th, 2023, um, where we're going to be introducing CloudFormation language extensions. Um, so from those of us here at AWS Supports You, happy cloud computing, and we will see you next week. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.